what's up so ladies and gentlemen chapter two of fortnite is here and with that has come huge changes and before we get into anything else on this channel today first and foremost i wanted to come at you guys with 23 things you need to know before playing the new map so basically this is just going to be a super helpful guide explaining all the changes as well as some secrets and things that are a little bit more low-key that you might miss also make sure to watch to the very end as as we get through the video we're going to get into the more like unique and rare little easter eggs and stuff that are super helpful um so yeah just watch all the way through anyways if you guys are new to the channel and want to join the other hundred thousand people who have subscribed in the last two days hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. All right, so I think the first and most important thing we need to say that's probably obvious, but we still gotta say it, is that there's a new map. We have a brand new map complete with art change and all. That's obvious enough, but I did need to put it out there. I also do just want to comment on the art style as I've been seeing a lot of people complaining about it, that it grows on you. Give it some time. If you're not sure how you feel about it, it will grow on you fast. Um, and it's actually a really good change in my opinion. But anyways, let's move on to something a little less obvious. And number two, we've got old places returning. Now, despite being in a new universe with a brand new map, some old favorites have actually made it through and returned. Classics including Pleasant Park in the Northwest, Salty Springs in the middle of the map, and Retail Row in the Northeast are back, which I am really, really glad about. I think it gives us a level of familiarity, but also there's a whole bunch of new locations that make it feel fresh. Those, however, are not the only three locations that are back. One other unnamed location is here. Risky Reels with some slight variance has returned as an unnamed POI. That is absolutely huge. It is just so cool to see an old fan favorite return to our map. Um, so that's another really exciting spot. But moving on to number three on the map, um, not only do we have old locations, we've also got new familiar locations. Now there's some very new locations which are going to feel fresh and reinvigorating, but there's a lot of locations in the new map that are also actually quite familiar. If you go to Misty Meadows, it's going to feel exactly like a grass version of Happy Hamlet. Holly Hedges is almost an exact replica of Greasy Grove. Weeping Woods is an exact merging of Wailing and Lonely Lodge. And then Frenzy Farm is obviously extremely similar to Fatal Farm. So if you're looking for something that's different, but still feels familiar, you can look to those places. Anyway, so moving on to number four and moving away from the map, let's talk about new stuff. One of the most notable and exciting things that I think has been added in are new chests. A variant of the basic chest that we have known for two years now has been added in, and it is a blue chest. So the blue chest spawns in in certain locations and basically has a chance to replace the regular chest. And you can imagine it acting in a similar way as a supply drop. So supply drops will always give you a legendary weapon and these blue chests seem to almost always give you a purple. And I mean, that can be extremely helpful, especially at the start of a game. I've gotten both a purple scar and a purple pump shotgun from it. So it's very nice to see. They spawn all around the map. So just keep your eyes peeled and also keep your ears out because they do have a different sound sound from the traditional chest and uh, you should be able to find them quite easily. And actually to go along with our new chests, we've got a new type of ammo crate. So this again is not completely replacing the original ammo crate that's still in the game, but it has a chance to replace it at times in certain locations. And the new ammo crate drops both a ton more ammo along with a healing item. In the gameplay you see here, I got a full shield, but you can also get minis as well. Those are something that don't make noise, but keep your eyes peeled for them because they are super useful. But anyways, moving on to new things added into the map, I wanna now talk about Heals. Because just overall, the healing system has really actually changed a lot. It's been uh, simplified. So healing items removed from the game include chug splashes, slurp juice, chug jugs, campfires, and I think that's it. I may be missing something of what was removed, but basically all that exists in the game now for healing is bandages, medkits, big potions, and little potions. It's easy and it's really simple, but there's one healing item that's been added in and it is the bandage bazooka. 
So this is a new and extremely unique item that allows you to heal players from a distance. It takes up two slots of your five slot inventory, so it is a little bit costly, but I think in squads at least, it is going to be worth it. It heals 15 health a shot and can go all the way up to 100 health, but the best thing is that it regenerates ammo. So you don't actually have to find ammo for this thing, it will just simply regenerate over time. It works in the same way as a chug splash where you just shoot it on the ground and anyone in the area, including yourself, will heal them. And again, it's just something I think that's going to be awesome for squads to help players that maybe aren't the best builders, you know, really find a role on the team as more of a aid and I guess medic. Now moving on to number seven, we got to talk about some big changes, the weapon pool. So the weapon pool in Fortnite has been significantly changed this season, but not to the point where the game is going to now feel unfamiliar. Basically, all the peripheral weapons have been removed. So weapons like the scoped assault rifle, the infantry rifle, the deagle, the silenced semi-automatic sniper, the minigun, the suppressed assault rifle, revolvers, the deagle, I might have already said deagle. And so basically what they did is they made the game again a whole lot more simple. What they did is they removed all these peripheral weapons and basically made every single type of weapon like the M16 and SCAR. Every single type of weapon now has a variant from gray all the way up to gold. You know how the basic assault rifle was gray, blue, green, and then once it got the purple, it became the SCAR? That's every single weapon in the game now. You have the Bolton 5 variants, the RPG, the burst assault rifle, an SMG, a pump shotgun, attack shotgun. It's become very simple, which honestly, I think is really good. So that's a bit of a general statement on weapons. Now let's move on to the significant weapon changes. First and most importantly, we gotta talk about everyone's favorite weapon, the pump. Now overall, the pump has improved since season 10. What used to be the green and blue pump has basically just had a reskin. Um, it's the same weapon. Weapon, but it now comes in common, uncommon, and rare versions. For damage, it does 70, 80, and 90. That 70 is, is really bad, and by the time it gets to 90, it's, it's kind of back up to what you expect of the pump. But then, most importantly, we have the purple and gold pump back. The purple pump does 100 to the body and 200 to the head, while the gold does 110 and 220, making these the only two shotguns in the game which can one-shot at full shield. As a look at the pump overall, the purple and gold versions are again amazing, blue is still good, and I don't really recommend using the gray or green versions. Especially with the gray, 70 is just not enough, and if you do have that, I would honestly recommend any tack over it. Now moving on to another weapon we gotta talk about is actually the pistol. So the pistol has actually seen some really big improvements in this update. Every pistol has been removed except for the semi-auto, so no deagle, revolver, uh, gold revolver or silence pistol. And basically, again, we've got a gray, green, and blue variant that does 24, 25, and 26 damage. And now we've actually got a purple and gold version, which is the M1911 uh, doing 28 and 29 damage. It feels like these weapons have also received a bit of an accuracy bonus. And honestly, pistols are starting to feel as a viable option. Not something you're gonna use late game, but honestly, if you get one of these early on and that's all you have, you can actually make do with it against a shotgun. Now moving on to number 10, another weapon that's seen huge changes is the RPG. We've got, again, a gray, green, blue, purple, and gold version of this thing. The gray does 70 damage, so it's really not very good, but does give you that explosive splash damage. Going through the rest of them, each version increases by 15 damage, so green does 85, blue does 100, Purple, 115, and gold, 130. And then the purple and gold version have different weapon wraps. See how just clean it feels? It, it's, it's super simple and basic. Now, another set of weapons that's been changed up a lot is the sniper. The only sniper in the game now is the bolt action. And again, it's as you see, gray to gold. Now the Grey Bolt Sniper only does 95 damage, meaning it's not enough to kill a player at 100 health. The green does 100, blue does 105, purple does 110, and the gold does 116. And then again, purple and gold have different wraps. But lastly, and I think one of the most significant changes for weapons is actually the Burst Assault Rifle. So basically what has happened is what was the FAMAS has been turned into the original Burst Assault Rifle. You've got variants of the FAMAS now in 
gray, green, and blue. And a brand new weapon has been added into the game, which is the AUG. This thing does 32 and 33 damage in epic and legendary variants and is honestly one of the best weapons I've ever seen in the game. It's got a whole lot better accuracy than the original FAMAS did, even though it does the same damage. Um, and if you haven't used it yet, I highly recommend giving this weapon a try. It reds but moving on to another change with the whole weapon system let's talk about weapon upgrades so there's been a new system implemented into fortnite that allows you to exchange materials for a weapon upgrade so for example if you have a blue pump you can exchange in this case 250 of wood brick and metal for a purple version now in a lot of situations this isn't going to be worth it as that many materials is just so good but the reason i do bring up blue to purple is it's going to be the only time that I recommend doing so because going from the blue pump to the purple pump brings it up to that 200 headshot damage same goes for a blue assault rifle it's going to take you up to a scar which becomes now a three shot kill rather than a four shot kill it's a really cool system but is very expensive with mats so if you're ever going to do it again I recommend blue to purple only now moving on to our number 14 spot and moving away from weapons I want to talk about items in general okay so you know how again I said they've kind of simplified the game all the items are gone like 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 literally just just everything I mean off the top of my head shockwave grenades junk rifts shields literally all that is gone we have weapons healing items a bandage bazooka and fishing rods there's only one trap item that exists in the game and that is the trap that's right launch pads have been removed it's a complete overhaul of Fortnite, and honestly it may sound bare bones but i love it it is so nice to be able to go into a game and not have to worry about carrying some crazy weird weapon to give you some advantage in the end game no you literally just get weapons and heals and it is basic Fortnite. it's incredible but moving on to number 15 we should probably talk about what i just mentioned which was fishing this is one of the new features that was added in as you guys may have seen in the battle pass and it's actually very unique so you can pick up fishing rods basically all around the map they're super readily available and there will be areas of water that basically just have a lot of splashing going around you won't miss them they're, they're really obvious anyways you can cast your rod in three times until it goes away and each time you should get a rare item so you can get any type of weapon which is really nice i've been finding myself to find a lot of rare and up types of weapons you can also find one type of fish which will heal your health and then another which basically acts as a slurp it will heal 50 shield and 50 health and you can actually carry it around it's a really really good item so not one of your traditional items that i talked about earlier but it is something that's of great use i was really worried about this system but it's super easy super quick and it doesn't feel like it takes you out of the game at all so it, it's really great but another thing that we got to talk about if we're going to talk about fishing is the water itself and what you can do in it swim a swimming mechanic has been added into the game um, that allows you to get around the map sometimes faster so um it's realistic mechanics if you're going upstream you're slower than walking and if you're going downstream or with the currents you will be faster you're a little bit vulnerable in the water but overall it is a very effective and useful way to get around the map also if you press square you'll do like a dolphin dive and it's just really silly and funny and um it's a good time moving on with water another thing you guys have probably seen are boats added into the game now boats act pretty much as any vehicles ever acted in Fortnite. um you can have four people on it you have a boost button and you drive it it also shoots rockets which are reminiscent of mech rockets except instead of being 12 it only does one but a really useful thing to know guys is you can actually drive boats on land that's right guys they lied to you they're not only boats but cars it's not the most controllable but with the boost you can really make a lot of distance and if you do need to run from the storm I highly recommend taking a boat on land okay now moving on to number 18 we are moving into the Easter eggs those small little details that you definitely don't know the first thing we got to talk about is slurpy swamp the best location to ever exist in Fortnite so slurpy swamp is the slurp potion factory around slurpy swamp are tons of kegs slurp trucks and slurp vats if you break a slurp keg you will get both metal and 10 health or shield added to your character if you break a truck you will get 25 health or shield 
added. And on top of that, there are vats you can sit in, other big things you can break for 25. It is incredible because not only are you healing yourself, you're getting lots of metal. It is just amazing. I recommend Slurpee Swamp. And I again, I would say it is by far the best location in the new map. Now, moving on to number 19, I want to talk about interactions. There's a lot of things you can now interact with the map. There are dumpsters you can hide in. There are lily pads you can jump on. There are gas station things that you can shoot and they will actually blow up now. Especially though, there's a lot of things you can hide in. So keep your eyes peeled out um, as there are a lot of things now that you can interact with the map. At number 20, we have power lines. Epic has actually added in the feature that you can use power lines now as zip lines. There is a really long stretch of zip lines that goes along the portion of the map. And with limited mobility in this game, this is a really useful thing to know. If you're running from the storm, you can build yourself up and take the zip line to get to safety. At number 21, we've got a feature. Super simple, but I want to include it. And that's just when you die, there's actually a ready up feature in that like spectating lobby mode. So you don't actually have to load yourself back to the lobby and then into another game, in which I know is going to save people a lot of time, especially you console users out there. Moving on to number 22, you can jump from high buildings and land in hay. What's up? That, that That's it. That's the small detail, but it's useful to know. In case you happen to be in a huge build fight at Frenzy Farm, if you jump down and land on the hay, you will not take fall damage. And ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number 23, we gotta talk about picking up players. So now in Fortnite, you can pick up both your teammates and enemy players. If you actually pick up your own teammate, you can run faster, which will be great for getting away from enemies and escaping the storm. If you pick up an enemy player, you can take them up to a high building, yeet them off and kill them. It's a great feature. It, it, it truly is. And I mean, come on, it's called Yeet. So it, it has to be good. Anyways, though, ladies and gentlemen, um, that is our list. Thank you to you guys who made it all the way through. I hope that this was helpful. I just wanted to do a basically overview video of everything that is new to the map. If you guys are new to the channel, again, make sure to subscribe. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like. And uh, I'll be back again with another video tomorrow. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, peace out, you freaking nerds. Still good, I think we still good.